She can feel it coming. It was in the air. It tasted harsh and sterile in her mouth. It singed her nostrils and stung her eyes. It prickled her skin like thorns and pressed down on her chest like a stone. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh Lord. I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Oh, Lord. An eyelid overflowed, allowing a single teardrop to escape and trickle down the side of her cheek. The tracheal breathing tube snaked down her throat, rubbing it raw as it pushed air into her chest. A symphony of melancholy played in the background from a rhythmic beeps of machines pumping medicine into her dying body to make the pain bearable. That was how Rebecca welcomed the arrival of 1998. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh Lord. I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Oh Lord. She laid in the hospital room, conscious of her surroundings, unaware of the microbes gorging themselves taking advantage of an immune system no longer capable of keeping them at bay. She laid in her hospital bed in total blackness, slowly drowning in the phlegm dripping and collecting in the empty spaces within her lungs. She was alone and in agony, waiting for death's inevitable approach. The only light was from the buttons on the pumps that reflected off the IV stands. The morphine confused her sometimes, now the room was no longer dim, and she was not alone. Well, if you told me you were drowning, I will not lend a hand. I've seen your face before, my friend, but I don't know if you know who I am. Monotonous regular intervals of called out from the compressed air of a ventilator. The respirator covered most of her face, but over its thick rubber rim that created the airtight seal, she could make out the shapes of seven towering winged figures. They stood side by side, hands interlocked with one another. They gave off a soft glow that held back the darkness. Just beyond the reach of the light and hidden in the shadows, hordes of dark and slimy things waited impatiently. The seven whispered into her head. With desperation, they begged her and pleaded with her over and over again. Say it! Say it now! Say it! You are running out of time! Say it before it's too late! You must say it! Say it! It's the only way! We cannot help you if you do not say it! I've been waiting for this moment all my life, oh lord. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh Lord, I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Her mind drifted back to a time when she was young and innocent. Even now, she dreams of herself still a little girl. She mourns for that child. The precious little thing never stood a chance. Everyone told her how pretty she was, friends, family, and neighbors. Her father would tell her she was the most beautiful little girl in the whole wide world. Well, I was there and I saw what you did. I saw it with my own two eyes. So you can wipe off that grin. I know where you've been. It's all been a pack of lies. Her daddy would tell her those words often, late at night with the smell of cheap liquor on his breath. Her last memory of him was his hands around her throat trying to squeeze the life out of her. When she was 12, her stepdad, too, claimed how beautiful she was. 
He embedded those words into her memory under the weight of his sweaty body. Her first boyfriend said he'd never seen a girl as pretty as her and showered her with kisses of affection and backhands out of the rage. By the time she had turned 16, no hint of that sweet little girl remained. Like the fate that would come to her older self, she too died in pain and loneliness. Well, I remember. I remember, don't worry. How could I ever forget? It's the first time, the last time we ever met. The adult she became lived a life of bitterness and hate. She took pleasure from inflicting that which was done to her upon her very own children. Her body was used as a vessel for pleasure and means to obtain any chemical or substance within her reach. She was ready for the end when the doctor told her she was sick. She was infected with something that could not be treated. But I know the reason why you keep your silence, oh. No, you don't fool me. Cause the hurt doesn't show, but the pain still grows. It's no stranger to you and me. The voices of the seven were growing distant, as if they had accepted her as a lost cause. With her last bit of strength, she thought of all the wicked and vindictive things she had done in her short life. She pondered if it could be this easy. She knew in her heart that if she was given a different life, she would have been a better person. She knew she never would have believed that everyone else deserves to experience the agony she felt. With the last bit of life about to fade away, she let go of her anger and asked for forgiveness. She said, Yes, I accept him into my heart. I accept him as Lord and Savior. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh Lord. I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Oh Lord. The glow of existence, the glow of existence manifested and burst into magnificent rays of light that expanded outward like it must have appeared at the moment of creation. It pulsated closer and closer to her. She wanted to feel that warm, welcoming. She wanted to feel that warm and welcoming light kiss. She wanted to feel that warm and welcoming light kiss her skin. She could feel it coming in the air. It made contact with her. It consumed her. She, waiting for this moment, for all my life, felt it penetrate her completely. It bathed her body and enveloped her mind, her soul, her very being, and she felt nothing. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Darkness settled upon her and filled every space in and around her. Paralyzed was her body, not from immobility, but from the reality that she no longer had limbs to command. Slowly, a sensation of spinning emerged in her consciousness. Round and round, she spun faster. The twirling gained speed every second, and she began to ascend. She rose off of her bed. She hovered in the empty air, suspended in an existence where gravity had no hold of her. The outward pull from spinning was comforting and filled her with a sense of balance that lifted her higher and higher. She passed through and across the vast expanse of space into the profound emptiness of our universe. She witnessed planets, solar systems, and galaxies pass her by. She saw the birth of new stars, the emergence of new worlds and old suns collapsing, stellar bodies of churning hot, glowing gases a nebula swirling in complete harmony raced past her at impossible speeds. She exceeded the speed of light and reality, penetrating the membrane that is infinity. Thoughts and reason began to unravel and separate from one another. Faster and faster she shot through the planes of existence until she stood before the gates of heaven. Though she no longer was bound to a body, she walked through the gates. Though she had no eyes, she looked at the ethereal world that stood before her and saw the people who resided in paradise. In this incorporeal form, her perceptions were no less than omnipresent. She could view the grass, the trees, the people from afar, or up close, all at once. She could see everything from every angle, from below or above, 
simultaneously. She opened her eyes to her companions who had also been rescued by the grace of God and given an eternity of paradise. All at once, she looked into the eyes of men and women of all ages and race. Her eyes met with different people from throughout man's history. Her eyes fell upon her father, and his eyes fell upon her. She took a step back and gasped in surprise. The eyes of her uncle appeared before her. The eyes of a former friend who had almost beat her to death for her drugs stared at her intently. More and more people appeared before her, all of them liars, murderers, thieves, and degenerates. Not a single one of them deserving of a heavenly reward in the afterlife. Confusion and fear filled her as she continued to look into her father's eyes. Through the gaze, the past of those around her appeared before her. It was like trickles of memory flowing before her. The horror from understanding brought her to her knees. She was witnessing their final moments before death. She saw her father lying on the ground with a gunshot wound. She saw another clutching a large knife protruding from her side. Still another lay convulsing on the floor choking on his own vomit from a massive overdose. They all had one thing in common. With hands interlocked with each other, seven winged figures stood over the dying sinner and demanded of them to say it. And they said it, the moment before they died, just like she had. Heaven opened her mind and bestowed its revelation upon her, and she cried out in despair from the knowledge it had revealed. She would spend eternity standing side by side and next to the ones who had desecrated her body and stolen the beautiful gift of childhood. Even after all the stars have burnt out, she would forever look into the eyes of the man who had taken everything she ever had and all she was meant to become. In this existence, God and Satan are the same. There is no difference between heaven and hell, nor is there any difference between an angel and a demon. The creatures in the darkness shunned by the light of the seven were not evil. It was trickery to conceal their true identity and purpose. They were oblivion. The true reward from death. It is the only means to attain ascension to the greater planes of existence. The mind of man was not intended to have an eternal existence. Man is a being of gratification and experience, always craving something new and different to stimulate his imagination. He quickly and easily grows tired of the old and familiar. Heaven is not a place for such a creature. Its confinement would be a torment to an active mind with nothing new to discover and nothing more to experience after. Imagine this existence after one year, ten years, one hundred years, or a thousand years. Heaven's light burned bright with its revelations. It is not for God to forgive thy sins. It has no impact or consequence to him. True forgiveness can only come from those thou have sinned against. In a great burst of light, heaven revealed its final truth. All who had passed through these heavenly gates had committed the only sin that was truly unforgivable. To ask for forgiveness at the moment of death, and to believe thyself absolved without penance for thy sins is blasphemy. To accept atonement and salvation with thy last breath, with nothing more than faith and belief in thy hands is a great offense. Paradise is not granted to those without absolution, to those who thou have wronged, and are absent of good deeds and charitable works towards thy fellow man. Paradise is not granted to those without absolution to those who thou have wronged, and are absent of good deeds and charitable works towards thy fellow man.